hyperkalemia. Hyperkalemia is defined as potassium more than 5 milliequivalents per liter. Normal potassium level is 3.5 to 5.0. Minus 98% of potassium is intracellular, particularly within the muscles. So even slight changes in extracellular concentration can affect cardiac and neuromuscular functions, especially cardiac. Because hyperkalemia alters the electrical signal that conducts the heart, causing tall peaked T waves, prolonged PR intervals, which is an early sign of hyperkalemia, and widened QRS complexes. Causes. Excessive potassium intake and rapid infusion of potassium-containing IV solutions. Impaired kidney functions because potassium is normally excreted by the kidneys. Overuse of potassium-sparing diuretics. Conditions that move potassium from intracellular to extracellular, such as tissue damage, acidosis, and hyperuricemia. Interventions. prar omt treatment is critical because it can lead to ventricular dysrhythmias such as V-fib and V-tac and asystole. When treating hyperkalemia, a combination of IV calcium gluconate and IV insulin and dextrose are often given and they have a rapid onset to reverse hyperkalemia. Insulin given intravenously helps to shift potassium into the cells and thus lowering the serum potassium. IV dextrose is given prior to IV insulin to prevent hypoglycemia. Monitor blood glucose frequently afterwards. Calcium gluconate does not lower potassium level, but it stabilizes cardiac cell membrane and antagonizes the effect of hyperkalemia on cardiac muscles. Other agents that also shift potassium into cells include sodium bicarbonate and albuterol. Loop and thiazide diuretics helps to excrete the extra potassium by peeing it out. Sodium polystyrene sulfonate or chiaxalate is a medication that promotes GI sodium absorption and potassium excretion. Both medications take hours to start working. Educate patient on potassium-restricted diet and avoid use of salt substitutes which contains potassium. 